Originally from Boston, but spending a lot of time in Worcester and um, been a community activist, been doing stuff in the community with young people for like ever since I've been known him. So, but he's gonna call the show. We'll talk about him and he's gonna uh, tell us a little bit about his film and what he's doing and um, make sure you guys go there and check it out. But right now, you already know who it is. It's Kuta Kente, Barack King X, um, mm -hmm. One Foot Off. Oh, I said that. Barack King X, Kuta Kente, One Foot Off. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so trying I, to get free. Uh, uh, do you what, see Roots? I'm, no, I haven't seen Roots. All right, all right let's, we'll get and into I, that. That's what we want to on our topic. And I'm here to keep it real for you. I didn't even like the first one that I saw. <laughs> I, mean, I had a lot of, lot of stuff in Yeah, that's a hard thing to watch. But um, we got Truth in here, too. Yeah, Truth in, a.k.a. Free Will, a.k.a. Will of God, a.k.a. The Silverback. A.K.A. Your Will and Testament, A.K.A. One Million Dollars, A.K.A. Mr. Five O'Clock Shadow it's at your service. Uh, shout outs to Mike. Uh, shout outs to Nate. Thank you guys for like letting me be a part of this uh, to fill in oh, whatever. Well, well, I mean, so. the truth. Um, truth. We get truth. He said it. You said it. Thing before that. We. we look at that truth. Look at that truth. He didn't shout, shout out the truth. And a shout You're out here. to Joe. Yeah, you. You, you know, know so much people are here. Yeah. Um. But um. Uh, let me ask you guys something. Let me ask you guys something. <laughs> just um. I want to talk about how's the uh, um. The Arch Angel Show. Going. Arch Angel. Arch, Arch Angel Angel Show. I can't never say that together. Yeah, that's what I say. Quick. Quick. A minion. I am. <laughs> I don't. I don't. My vocabulary is very low. My but. Too. How's your show going? And what, and, and Angel on uh, Mass Appeal Radio Wednesday from four, uh, 3 to 4. And it's an hour show and it, and it focuses on mostly on men issues in, of, of nature, women too, and different issues to bring about a, a return to chivalry. Mm -hmm. And chivalry, you know what that is. It's the ethics. It's doing the right thing. It's, you know, it's, it's a way of life that used to used to bring a lot more happiness than this this self-grandizing life that we seem to be living in right now. So you can tune in, podcast on uh, Mass Appeal Radio on Wednesday from 3 to 4, and you can listen to Trooper Joe hosting uh, Archangel. What, what, what topic is going to be on this Wednesday? Oh, this Wednesday we got a real nice topic I'm going to be talking about. Um, different forms of marriage and how marriage is really the 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 um, footing for chivalry. There's, I'll be talking about three different types of marriage. Actually, yeah, one I have to go three different look types? At. I thought it was just one. It was just one. You just yeah. go there to the altar. And Polygamy? Like, Polygamy is a type of marriage. No, it's not that I'm type not. of marriage that I'm talking about. It's more a relationship type of, a, uh, of an ordeal. One's going to be about interracial marriages and stuff and how, mm. how they're prevalent throughout the world and, and much more prevalent than, than we really know. And, yeah. you know really? Another one's going to be more the conventional style of marriage and everything and the importance of, of, of how marriage is, is able to love starting right there with your, with your significant other that you're able to build a much more chivalrous life. And the third part is going a little bit off the wall because sometimes we do. That's a little abstract. We're going to be talking about the return of, some of you people might remember her back in the day, the Dolly, the Dolly doll that people used to buy and have sex with. But now, in this day of technology and things, 
It's an $8,000 robot that weighs over 100 pounds that's becoming quite a fad throughout the world. People are paying. Virtual reality, yep. Yeah, $8,000 to buy a robot doll to have sex with that they can't even lift. I, I don't get it, but we're going to talk about that on Archangel tomorrow. That definitely has nothing to do at all with a chivalrous nature. Your moral compass is gone. <laughs> Your belief system is gone. It's a little weird as far as I can see. So right. tune in tomorrow. Now, um, yeah, tomorrow, Wednesday. That's the four. longest commercial truth. <laughs> <Yeah>. so, <laughs> so, so let me ask you something, Will, something different. I want to ask you what, what was like the, the most um, feedback topic that you had, that you had like, the most feedback that, since your 5 o'clock shadow show started. Um... Well, controversial feedback, like some more, more interesting topic. Well, one thing uh, I know today, what we're going to be talking about, not like as compared to the other topics, is why the N word is not good, and no matter what the context that you use it, and also that I have no, I I learned a lot. I have no problem with uh, racist, with white people being racist. I have a problem with white supremacy. I don't have a problem with people, white people being racist. And we'll talk about that on the five o'clock shadow today. Okay, okay. you turn into a racist junkie. I know it's gonna bust you. You're a racist <laughs> junkie. <laughs> but I'm learning. You know what? I'm I'm learning though. I'm learning like you can't like white people being racist is not a bad thing. All right. All right. No, it doesn't affect. I mean, it'll affect you if it's a physical towards your person and stuff. A lot of people define racism and race differently. I mean, are the constant race um, plus power. Equals racism. So, like, if somebody is racist, they're 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 ex they're putting their power among somebody else, and in, in, in manipulating um, them in a certain way, which is not going to be beneficial to the opposer. Who, I, and I don't see nothing wrong. The problem is that black people aren't racist enough. Okay. Okay. We're going to talk about that on the five o'clock show. That's a little bit too much to get into right now. I kinda, <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. It got yeah. my it got my ear. Okay. But um, right. but you know, so let's. Um, um, Domingo Guyton, who um, talked about the N word a little bit, he has mm. like has like a documentary on that yep. and stuff. So many calls, maybe we'll talk to something about the N word, like he mentioned that and stuff like that. And, yep. and you said it's not acceptable at all for nobody to use. And uh, the, the nigger, nigga, and any of those words. Oh, we can't say. Oh, my fault. I, I apologize yeah, for saying that. You can't say the N word. You can't say the N word with the A at the end or the E R at the end. You can none of those words. But, I don't but, accept. But, I'm not your N word. But that's, that. but that's crazy. I'm not on the radio station, but like I'm just thinking about like it, with the A, it, it's not good with the A either. Nope. No. Nope. I'm talking about for the radio station, like you said. Oh, oh, for the radio yeah, station, yeah, like, I don't. Like, it's if you say N I G G A N I G G E R, right? G E R, like like what's not acceptable for the radio, but I, I, that's that's a different thing. Out of respect, out of the, out of respect for the radio station, since it's not my radio station, I respect their opinion on it. So yeah, I know, but I have a problem with anybody using any form of the word. Okay. All right. All right. Um. So. Like that been like a an age old topic yep. discussion for yep. years and stuff. So yep. I'm interested in your perspective on that. Um, who are you gonna be talking to with this? Or just you? Or uh, hopefully it'll be a, a a Dread Saint Mike. He's supposed to be coming through on the show. If you want to come on the show too, you know you're more than welcome. Um, I'm I'm gonna go to this Domingo thing at five thirty. So oh, okay, I'm right. be watching that um documentary that you have as well. You know, I, you know I'm probably pop up before <laughs> that. You know I got I'm about to have my show up on that too, but like. We're, and we're I, am, I, for one, am looking forward to that. I've been hearing some things about that. I'm looking forward to that show. I can't wait to see it. But uh, we just yeah. have uh, someone just came into the house, Sir Lord Keys. So I'm going to back out for you guys so you guys can have your conversation. And, and shout out to everybody. 5 o'clock shout out, 5 p.m. You don't want to talk to Sir Lord Keys. <laughs> right, what's going on, listeners? Uh, what's going on to the listeners? That's Pete, Keith, Keith, K, Sir Lord Keys in the house. Um, listening to Archangels and eight thousand dollar robot. That's crazy. The Patty Q too. I saw. <laughs> right. Right. So, so no let's, let's let's get into something. Uh, Wait, I'm I want to give a shout out to this place called Maple Maple Syrup Grow in Vermont, where I buy some very delicious maple um, uh, cookie maple syrup cookies and stuff. So everybody go up to Vermont to Maple Syrup Grow. They'll treat you like a king and you got some nice this cooking. Weekend? Yeah, this weekend I went on a, took me nine miles hiking, being the lovely bride, hiking this Mount Lafayette. I have to go over three mountain ranges to get up on top of this mountain. 
It was more like mountaineering than, than, mount, than hiking. I was hand and foot half the time, up to hand and feet coming down, cross three rivers. I'm like, where am I? I thought this was a hike. But I made it. I'm still recovering now. I've been, been recovering for 48 hours on this. This, this mountain put a whooping on me. I'm humble. I've been humbled by the mountain. Humbled by the mountain. But um, the mountain knows I'll be back. I, uh, I determine it. I'll be back. I'm going to take that mountain out. All right. Talk about maple syrup. Yo, you always <laughs> on some, like, this uppity, like, that shouts out to the maple company. I was like, yeah. come on, man. Well, the lady was well, actually, I forgot the lady's name from the maple syrup. She's from Worcester. Oh, I would have put that. She's somebody from Worcester. She's from Worcester, got maple. maple, 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 maple <laughs> so that's that's yeah. right there. So I give her a shout out to all the people that live up on off the Salisbury Street and stuff. So I know they're all listening right now, and it's a nice shout out for them. And they'll have a good time when she comes down to visit and have maple syrup Shit. and cookies. I want to see the um, <laughs> donate to the station, donate some funds to the station. What's so so Sarah? What's the lady's name? <laughs> the maple, lady, maple syrup lady donates don't donate to the station if you're listening. And the number is probably what is it seven five three two two eight four. So um donate to the station. We always need some money. And yeah, I all mean, cookies. All some cookies. good cookies. Well, them up. We can't do nothing with cookies. Man. We're like we need some money, yo. <laughs> nah, 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 but cookies will do. Cookies will do. I mean, uh, a good gesture. What's up, man? Cookies. I use the cookies. What's up with you though? Is, um, um shot, yeah, I got my show starting Friday. I got to do an infomercial for it called the One Man Team, and um, it's just uh, it's really focusing on individuals who go above and beyond, either for them, you know what I mean, for their family or for the community, and do like uh, I guess what, what I would call, you know, I guess a uh, uh, teamish type stuff, you know, but it's broad. It's more like uh, anybody who can define their success and can define their passion and what they're doing. Oh, that sounds interesting. You know, I'm, I'm, I want to have really um, people with money, you know, having some, some prominent wealthy people talk about how they got it and how they did it. They stole it. You know, and, um, <laughs> you know, focusing on giving people information about, you know, I got a, a guy who does taxes, I got a, a, a lady who does an accountant I'm have her on there. Teaching people how to, you know, little tips on how to get over, or well, not get over, but things to watch out for. Yeah, money. They say money came by happiness and stuff, and I, I'm a firm believer in that. You know, money, money, money came by your happiness. You can buy your things. You can buy yeah, your lot of food and stuff like this. But money, cause I'm gonna be humbled again. That money. Okay, how much money you got? You couldn't have got that amount. Oh, you're talking about hiking it, yeah. Yeah, doing anything. You yeah, the kind of thing you can kind of That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Let them wear your shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get the shoes and the shirt and the, and the shop shirt off that mountain. Yeah, so, exactly. can, yeah. so, so when your show going to be? Sorry, what day is going to have it on? Uh, it's going to be Monday and Friday, 1 to 3, on Massacre. You know, Monday Massacre and Friday? Radio. Monday and Friday. Massacre. And oh, it's going to have a different twist to it, so on Mondays, um, yeah, shouts out to my man Joyce and Mike. It's going to be like a motivational Monday thing, motivating people. So I'm going to try to have some motivational speakers, some motivational people on on Mondays and Fridays. It's going to be, you know, more of uh, the theme is going to be coming in and uh, uh, have your choice of drink. I'll, I'll pay for your choice of drink. And it's going to be more of like drinking and talking and, you know. I like talk. So hold on. I hold like on. that. Hold Wait, that's so okay. Let me ask you something. Hold on. So, what do you mean you're gonna pay somebody to drink? I don't, I don't I'm not paying. No, you, you come on my show on a Friday. Uh -huh. You're gonna have your choice of drink. Your choice of live. So, so, so you're gonna have like random guests, or like you're gonna have these uh, appointed guests that you already have in mind, or? Oh uh, well, yeah, I got a list of guests that I'm trying to. But yeah, whoever comes on, you know, they come on on a Friday. They come in and sit back and relax, and you know. So when, I, when can I come on in and get some honey? Yeah, is that your choice of drink? Um, I, you know, I, I have a bottle of honey up on there for you. So you drink bottle, you don't really don't care what kind of yeah, it is. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, I still. Well, I'm not alcoholic, nothing, but I, I mean, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, I'll be not, show. What? Shout out to Shen. Yo, <laughs> <laughs> yo same Mike, Jay Filler, Mike talk a lot, Michael camera action, Mike camera action, Mike camera action. Uh, <laughs> uh, beautiful mind. 
It was fun. Yo, that's, that sounds genius, though. That's a, that's a really good idea, man. I think um, you get everybody drunk. No, because like, some people <laughs> might say, no, nah, I just have a tea. I have, I have, I might have, yeah. I have rice milk. You know what I mean? Like, it's, like they, they, with their drink, if it's a drink of their choice. It doesn't have to be alcoholic. Alcoholic. Right? Like, it, it actually it's says something about like more personality about the person. Right? It's like a, it's a different way of, uh, of people saying who they are. I think it's really. Uh, I, I like. I want, I want some um, Cambodian breast milk. Cambodian breast milk. The doctor's from the day Chicago. Hey. <laughs> 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 wait, 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 wait. How are you? Man, did you say <laughs> you drink alcohol? Yeah. Come on, man. Like this, this is crazy, yo. You know, you not. He indulges on, on occasion. He indulges. You know why? He indulges on occasion. Condition. You ain't supposed to. We ain't taking care of ourselves, man. We are dropping like flies. Yeah, yeah. We got weak kidneys. My, my kidneys. My kidneys are like. <laughs> Probably like a little bit above average. I went to a lot of tests and nothing really came up, really. I mean, I had like <laughs> alcohol. It, this dude was almond joy lattes in the back. This is crazy, man. Almond um, uh, joy lattes. Wow, you're allergic to almonds? He ain't supposed to be having sugar, man. Oh, see, oh, I'm a diabetic. Sweet. You're supposed to have sugar. Oh, yeah, I don't really understand that. Yeah. Okay, so oh, this I'll, this might be the main. No, I don't. Uh, no, diabetic no, supposed to get insulin. It, yeah. It's supposed to regulate the sugar. Yeah, regulate. Yeah. We're, we're insulin though, right? Not food. Well, well you could use a diet and stuff like that. Oh, but oh, mostly it'll be insulin because y- your body's your not body's producing. Yeah, not producing. This who? Oh yes, this is Nate. This is Nate. Um, thanks for thanks for calling. Um, I'm a, well, um, oh, I'm gonna um, yes. introduce yourself and tell tell us who you are. Ready? You're on here. Hey, what's up, y'all? Uh, Mingo Tank, good thing Also known as Mingo. <laughs> what are you calling from? I, um, he, he's calling from Boston. Are you in Boston, right? Yeah. Yeah, um, so I know you have, he has a documentary. I, mm-hmm. I sent it to the, um, Facebook. Mingo, what up? This is Mike. Yo, what's going on, my brother? You know, Yo, thank y'all so much for, for uh, allowing me to call in. Yeah, man, you're doing big things, doing big things, man, doing, doing, doing things across, up and down. It's a good look, man. I, you know, I, I trust you, man. I, I like what you're doing. Man, thank you. It's a little, it's a little hard to hear. I don't know to put you all on our speaker, but I think it might get feedback. But I'll, it's a little hard to hear you all. All right. Wait. This is probably the transition. Yeah. No, he can't. No, he can't. No, I can't. Go ahead, too. Now, now, it's probably the transition because I don't got headphones, and so we have to keep going in and out between the, uh, the, yeah. the studio speaker. Let me get some headphones, man. But, but, but go ahead, do your thing, man. Now, Domingo, um, won't you um tell us what's going on and what you're doing? And plus, I have a, a, a topic that we want to talk about is the N word because Will is going to be talking about that on his five o'clock chapel show today, right? Yeah. So, so um, Truth is going to be talking about that, but we want to talk a little bit about the N word. But um, just tell us what. About your um, film that you got going on right now, just a little bit about it and where, where to look at it. Okay, cool. Thank you so much again. It's uh, the name of the film is Footprints in the Concrete, and pretty much what I wanted to do is I haven't really opened up about my life or where I film from, and I wanted to, you know, it's been, we've been working on this film for about nine years. I did a series of interviews with uh, people who knew about my lifestyle before and how I was living, and then uh, there's been a change in my life um, and my faith. And so I, what I did was went around and interviewed people who kind of knew what I was doing before and knew the um, like the later life. And so we took those interviews, touched them in with a bunch of footage that I was holding on to, the footage from the mid-90s and uh, you know, late, late 90s to the early 2000s. I had a lot of raw footage of us in studios and and clubs and, you know, drinking and women and a lot of stuff that I was promoting. And so I just want to show people the rawness of before and then the rawness of what I'm doing now. <clears throat> All right, um, so when's this going to be shown? It's going to be shown tonight, 530, at Cinema uh, 320, and that's at Clark University. All right, um, I'm... I, w- I wanted to ask you a little about the N-word, and then um, Mike got a question to ask you. Um, but, but let me ask you a couple of things about the screening. Um, we're, we're, well, all right. So, uh, how much does it cost? You're clear. You're real clear, Nate. When you're talking, when Mike's talking, it's like he's in the back room. I can't really hear what he's saying. Can you hear me now? This mic? 
You hear me now, Mr. Varane? <laughs> a little better. Mr. Varane, hey, maybe it's a mic, man. I don't know. All right, I'll try to do a, a little bit better. Um, how, is, there, is there a fee? How much does it cost to see the movie? I know, it's very, very. Can you hear me? I don't hear anything now. All right, one sec. Oh, hey, Domingo, hold on. We're going to go to a bubble real quick. Be right back, okay, Domingo? Whatever you're using, Nate, is clean and clear. All right, so I'm going to go to that mic. All right, so Michael, clear this mic. All right, hey, Domingo, can you hear me now? There we go. Perfect, man. All right, we're going to have to do everything from this mic. So, uh, hey, how, how much does the movie cost? It's free. It's free to the public, and, um, you know, it's... it's Sponsored by the youth work of the Worcester and uh, I know UMass Memorial. A bunch of people came in. They wanted to make the event free and have people come on out and let's just uh, check out the film. Worcester is definitely on the map. Worcester helps save my life. I'm hoping that folks will come out. We can have good discussion and um, sort of hang out at Beatniks after with all folks. So. Where Beatniks? I thought that. Yeah. All right. Um. Yeah, so, yeah, there was one more question, but I forgot. I, I, I want to ask you, how did Worcester save your life? Man, well, I came, I, I had to, I had to get out of Boston because I had gotten to, I had got wrapped up in a couple of situations where the brothers was really trying to take my life and they were trying to kill me. And I had to get out, I had, I had lied and, uh, I had lied in court. There was a couple of things that happened that people really don't know about. But I just got out and the only way I could really get out was college. So Worcester State College accepted me. They accepted me in the summer program. Uh, and I went to the summer program, came to college, and then I ended up just kind of hanging out in Worcester. There used to be the White Hill Pantry right there on Chandler, and I think it was Main or Jim Street or whatever that. There, was, there's a, there's a, there used to be a White Hill Pantry. I used to walk to that at night. And it was just really, really uh, great to come to Worcester and nobody know me, and I could actually be, I was able to live life. Now, I, I'll tell you how uh, Worcester saved your life. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it, it, it gave you a bogus win at the Eden Nightclub at the town show. That's how I met me. <laughs> 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 I, 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 that's how I met me, go, man. Him and B. Payne. That's awesome. <laughs> Too, that, uh, Mr. Payne is talking about that in the documentary. So he's talking about what happened that night. So it would be awesome, man, you come out and see what he's saying and, and be able to respond and give you the... <laughs> All right. I um. So so Mingo um. Seems like this film's gonna be talking about how you have to take advantage of opportunities and do the best with them. It, it does touch on that. It also talks about sometimes we gotta get out of our environment. Sometimes we have to, you know, by me living in Boston, I had to get out of my environment. And Worcester was that safe haven. No one knew me. I was able to go to a new city. I could start over and no one would be talking about my past. So sometimes you have to take advantage of the opportunities in front of you. A lot of times you just have to get away from the environment your environment to start new sometimes. All right, um Trooper Joe's gonna ask you a question. Yeah, you say you, you say uh, can you hear me? No, you gotta go this way. How come you can't hear me? All right, you're gonna come to my mic and ask you. <laughs> so you say you're from Boston. what part of Boston? Matt Pan. Matt Pan? Oh, okay, that's fine. <laughs> up, I thought you were supposed to say Murder Pan. I thought you were supposed to say Murder Pan. I can't murder hear him. Uh, Mike said I thought you were supposed to say Murder Pan. <laughs> nah, nah, Matt Pan, because I didn't get murdered. So I, I, it's, it's right. You know, I was able to survive. And I used to say Matt Pan when I was in film, but there's still people living there. You know what I'm saying? So I can't be, I can't talk death to the people that live in Worcester. So I can't say that. Man, uh, that, that's confusing for me, man. When I was locked up, everybody I met was from murder pain. There was no matter pain, man. You had to murder pain. <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the slave mentality. Right, that's supremacy at its finest for us to downgrade where we come from and we all feel like we're dead. Like, if you're from murder pain, you should be murdered. Like, that's it's horrible thinking. Fair to say, fair to say, true. Yeah, yeah I'm from Jamaica Plain. <laughs> Okay, good, good. We spent a lot of time in Jamaica playing. We got enough love for him. Yeah? Yeah, down in Bromley Heath project? Oh, no. Well, we call that Roxbury. Bromley Heath. That was rough in the 80s and the 90s. And Anthony Robin was on a train. Uh, East, East Street project. And, you know, we, don't call that, we don't call that Jamaica playing. We call that Roxbury. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm back there in the early 60s and stuff. 
I was in Vietnam, they wrote a story about my mother, my knife, and my gun, life in Bobby Heath Projects in Jamaica Plain. We used to have the, the run of the world. Yeah, well, I'll tell you one thing. I used to be on the train going home from school, and the Heath Street boys used to be on the orange line. Yeah. And they used to run cats from downtown Crossing all the way to Jackson Square. Yeah. So the Bromley Heath, they used to wear the Miami Heat hats, and they were, they were, a, record, they were a force to reckon with. <laughs> when I was in high school, so that it, it's, I mean, right now you go through there, you see a lot of people, uh, you know, young white girls with iPods running on, running through as it's been gentrified. But in the 90s, man, East Street Projects was, uh, you, you could not walk through there. But I rock cats every day after school. Mm -hmm. Like, they used to get on the train and just rock people. <laughs> yo, yo, Mingo, um, I, I know you did a documentary or something like that on the N-word, and, um, Will... At the five o'clock shadow, it's on Master Bill Radio. It's going to be talking about that tonight, mm. and I want to hear your perspective on it. And the, um, I kind of have my perspective on. It. I don't even know where I lay at this, at this moment. It's just crazy with that. But um, I know I heard in your rhymes back in the day, you just drop the N word. Why? Why you change that? Yeah. Well, when I was when I was doing stuff back in the days, I was it was more so anger. It was more so just my environment. I was doing what I was. I talked a lot about um, using women. To I talked a lot about, you know, smacking that booty and smoking weed, drinking and running around acting crazy, talking foolishness, you know what I'm saying? Like, even my ride was a song about getting my license taken from cops. So I'd be, like, taking a ticket, throwing them out the window, and I can't, you know, living life as this is just about today. So I used the N-word a lot. But now, after being educated, probably around 2004, when I started diving into slave artifacts, started reading up on, I think so why white people hate me. So much. There's only one way to figure that. Get an answer. You go read them. I went down to the Worcester Public Library uh, books on the Klan. Once I started reading, like the, within the first two pages of reading the um, Ku Klux Klan book, my mind was totally flipped upside down. I was like, yo, what have I been doing with my life? From, from reading those Klan books, that's what made me dive into. African American history, the Reconstruction era. Once I started reading up on these slave narratives and, and hearing the slaves call themselves the N word, I was like, yo, this is something that comes right out of slavery. It comes right out of hatred. Um, but I totally understand why people use it because I did for so long, and I try to get it out of my, my vocabulary. I'm not going to be. I don't, one thing I do with the N word, I don't try to make people feel guilty for using it because I know where I was when I was using it. But I try to educate people on where it comes from and let them make. What, what about the initiative that Tupac try to create where they're trying to like down downplay the, the word, make change it into something to, to, to make it not use, useful no more when he changes the the um the the N I G G A to never ignorant, never ignorant getting goals accomplished. Um, um, do you think that's like something good to do? Like people say like it's not used like that no more. Now it's using the term of a, like an endearment or whatever. Yeah. That, so my answer to that would be twofold. First, yo, I love Tupac. He changed the game. He changed hip hop. He's one of my, one of my, he's in my heart. There's a piece that, of, of Tupac that's always with me. That dude totally changed the game. He, he, he told cats, he taught cats how to rap, how to stack their vocals, all kinds. He did so much for the game. He changed the total game. The other side of that coin, I would say, where's Tupac right now? Mm -hmm. All right. So we know where he is. So that, there's, he's there's in Cuba, chilling. Huh? Right he's in Cuba, chilling. I'm, I'm a conspiracy person. <laughs> he's probably in Cuba. Tupac is my eyes. Hey, Mingo. Mingo. He made a lot of crazy statements. That was one of them. You can't, it's like taking a cake, and you have a sweet cake, it tastes real good, you're going to put a little bit of rat poison in it, just to, you know, it's not going to do much. So you got a little bit of taint in there, it's bad. And, and coming from our history, nah, we can't reclaim, you can't reclaim something that has that, that many uh, centuries of atrocities. There's no way to reclaim that. So, okay, so I, I, I'm, I'm kind of with that too. I, I'm not really with the reclamation of it. But I, I have, so what about the, the, the counter narrative, right? So one of the tough things about living in white supremacy is it's hard to know what the truth is because everything is in, in a white context. But there's a counter narrative coming out now that, that actually um, nigger comes from niggas. Uh, 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 but it has a, a black uh, African origin 
and it's been misunderstood and miscommunicated. And, and it doesn't have any, uh, negative connotation. Only, only The only way that it has negative connotation is through the white man's misunderstanding of the word and usage of it. But it actually has uh, sincere origin. So I'll, I'll, my answer to that is, 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 is the same thing. When, um, when Jesus said, and put out the car, they put out a car, and the car was called a Nova, right? When they, so, so the Chevy Nova did really well in the United States. Why do you think the Chevy Nova did not do well in Latin American countries? Don't go. It means don't go. It means don't go. It means don't go. No va. Don't go. So what I'm trying to do, the reason why I say that is our context. You can talk about the N-word in the United States. It has, it's, when you talk about the origin of Africa, it's our context of where we are right now. So you can't, I don't want to hear... I know that, you know, you know, th there's a reason why my man Kendrick is doing what he's doing. And, and you know, he, you know, hey, you must props and respect to him. You know what I'm saying? But to, 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 to try to uh, use that as a way to kind of falsify or to um, bounce away from where we are in the current state. The reason why Kendrick is selling the album that he's selling is because he's using the word. And I don't care how we want to try to... And I'm, I'm, I know I'm going to hit some pulses with this one, but I don't care how we try to flip out or whatever. The reason why he's selling records is because he's selling black rage. And if you have sex, drugs, violence, or the love of money included inside your context, you're going to sell records because it's still white supremacy that running, that's running everything. So that's why, hey, you know, if people tell me, you know, you should use the N-word in your songs a little bit. or curse a little bit to get your message across. And I'm like, nah, that's selling out. So, um, we got back and forth here. We're in the studio. Thanks for cool. calling, but I, I want to see if you can. We want to um, end this. I want to um, see if you can call back in five minutes because I want to go to a, a bumper break and then um, and end the end the interview with you in five minutes. I'll call back. Thanks, thank you, brother. Jamal want to ask about Jamal Bryant. Um, Mike want to ask about Jamal Bryant. So we should call back. Okay, okay, okay. I'll call back. All right, thank you. No. 